Good evening. The declaration of a 9.65% interest rate on NSSF savings this year was anything but unsurprising. After a hard year in which the fund was forced to adjust strategy to pay midterm benefits and deal with market inflation, there was little hope for double-digit interest rate. But the harder question now shifts to how different can NSSF work with savers' money in the short term to give them value? How can the fund's ambitious real estate agenda work for its savers? Tonight on the spot is Richard Biarugawa, the NSSF Managing Director. Mr. Richard Biarugawa, thank you so much, sir, for having honored our invitation. A warm welcome to you. Thank you so much for having me, Patrick. Um, I've been on the circuit a little bit this week. Been to the radio stations, TV stations, and well. So here we are. And let me tell you, this is the real deal. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, when we save with NSSF, the savers want to know that their money is not only safe, but their money is just not even sitting idle on the account but their money is making more money for them. Richard, is our money making money for us? Yes. Um, one of the tools we use, the only tool we use, is what we call the strategic asset allocation. Uh, it's jargon for how much money do you it's, put in it's one... It's investment. <laughs> yes. So how much money do you put in this basket? How much money do you put in this, invest, in this investment? And how much money do you put in this bucket? So there are three buckets in which we put money. Um... One is a fixed income bucket. Uh, as the name suggests, it's fixed income. So when you put your money there, you know how much you're going to earn in it. So a common fixed income asset or um, instrument is a treasury bill or a treasury bond or even a fixed deposit account. You go to the bank, you go to the central bank, you get bonds that they're selling or treasury bills that they're selling or a fixed deposit that the bank is giving. And you know the rate they're going to give you determined uh, in the in the present that will affect the future so that's what we invest in the second You're practically bucket, investing in government yes well we are investing in a fixed income tool instrument issued by government it yep. could also be issued by a company by the way uh, you know we got a couple of those as well okay the second area we invest in is in equities these are companies these are, they could be private companies. In other words, their stock is not available for the public, but it's available for a few investors. It's private equity. But we could also invest in a company that is listed on the stock exchange. The company is available for the public to invest in it, and the stock has a value which changes on a daily basis. The third area that we invest in is what you'd call alternative assets, but that basically in our country means real estate. Uh, we've, we could have other investments that we have. For example, you can invest in metals, commodities, gold, and all those things, but they're not here. So we invest largely in real estate. Real estate. So those yeah. are three areas. So, are so three which areas. is the safest? Well, it depends on the return. Okay? So which gives us the better return? All right. So the safest, but gives you the lowest return, is a fixed income. Because Why can't you be so ambitious and... Uh, take a risk because any business plan man must be able to have some some risk must be risk taker ah, but you forget that we have uh, a pension scheme that we are running we have savers who have their money with us and we've got savers who will get their money in old age so you don't want them to go into Gumball old age no you don't want them to come into old age and you tell them their money doesn't exist anymore so 78 percent of our investment is actually in fixed income we get returns on the fixed income based on interest received and of course with uh, a bond you might also get something we call a coupon uh, on it which comes in every month but you would get back the principal as soon as the bond matures you, you don't seem to be very ambitious in trying to um, invest our money no we are, going for the we, are, we are very ambitious in fact if you look at the trend we have kept our investment in fixed uh, income about the same for the last 15 years. More than 70% of the money about invested about is put in an area that gives you less return. No, it gives you less return but is sure. 
Let me talk about the other investments. I think that's what you need to be aware of. So we've got an exposure of about 15% into equities, right? Equities are good. Their challenge is that they have a higher risk and they have a higher, uh, what you'd call um, the movement of the market is very erratic, all right? So you will find that in one year, like this year, we lost almost 20% of our value on the stock exchange. But last year, uh, when we issued 12.5%, uh, our markets had moved by about 30%. So you can see just in a period of a year, or two years, you've got a huge swing up and a huge swing down. There's a pendulum right? shift. A pendulum shift, all right? So now let me the people in investment call that you know, a high standard deviation, but basically it means that there is a big risk. But big risk is also covered by a big return. It's generally a market crash. Yes. No, not a market crash, but it is possible, that it's highly likely that the market will come down significantly and it will also go up significantly in any given period given the conditions that happen in the market. So people saving with you, they have been putting in their money for the last 20 years, 15, 10, 5, 1 year, they need to know at what interest are you uh, giving their money back? What, what profit are they making as of today? We're coming well, to the end of September. Well, we, we tend to when we, when we work out the numbers at the end of the year, we tend to average the return because every asset class will give you an average return. Yeah. So uh, if you look at your fixed income, um, uh, fixed income return, uh, this year we had generally a, a return of about 12, 13, maybe even up to 14% because there are some bonds which are but at the end of the day, you're going to give me a return on all the three, not just a certain of course. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. on so the three, how much are you giving me on my money? All right. So last year, mm -hmm. uh, our return was about 12.5%. And then we removed our operating costs. We paid tax on it. Uh, and as a result of that, the return that we passed on to you, because we don't keep any surpluses, uh, was 9.65%. And, so do, and do you know the so so that's that's the return but i think you haven't given me the opportunity to talk a little bit about real estate no because no that's because a big no factor. no no before i got the real estate because if you're giving me, me a return of 9.6 percent which is you, what we get. do you know that inflation has, is at nine percent now no it's not absolutely not inflation I'm is less than nine, nine let me, let me, I, i've just been reading something for, off the website of uganda bureau of standards Yes. And uh, just official inflation is at 9%. The inflation as measured by the Consumer Price Index for Uganda for the 12 months to August 2022 increased to 9.0%, up from 7.9% registered in July 2022. Yeah, but that's in one month. Yeah, in right? one month. So, I'm talking so about, we're talking about September, Richard. So, the rate of inflation. We're talking about September, Richard. Yeah. Inflation is at 9%, and you're giving me a profit of 9.6. Oh, 9 what are you giving me? Okay. So, what was it in um, January last year? It was our, our, actually that was around 1.9 or something. Interest rate, the, the inflation. Inflation, yeah. So it's just gone up, all right? It's gone so up. So you yeah. can't look at a figure today and say that that is I'm the inflation using a that figure. Has I'm you using a figure. Whole year. Because of to, it is today, we're discussing today. I'm using a figure of September and of, of the Uganda Bureau of Standards and what you're giving me, sir. Okay. So and, and I see that inflation is actually chewing up my money. Um, do you agree with that? I, As of September, I do not agree with it because the period that inflation you're talking about is for the month of s September. This month, where we're right? Yeah. yeah, September. Yes. But before that, it was seven. Before that, it was five. Before that, it was four. Before that, it was two. All right. That's 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 so, very true. That's very correct. Yeah. But you know, they also so, give they so also give an explanation. Uh, you know. And this was mainly driven the, by the increase in prices of commodities. So we do not know, and other, and other of course, other, co other circumstances, yes. but one of them, prices of commodities. Yes. We, we, we seem not to have control about how the market is going to play. Of course we do not have control, yeah. which, is, which is why you should have left me to talk a little bit about the asset classes oh, okay. to tell you how they protect you actually against inflation. Because first of all, you cannot use a single period inflation to measure the performance of your portfolio. In fact, we use the 10-year inflation because that's a period that is long enough to pick all the inflation rates for the period 
uh, to cover the period in which we are investing. Because we are not a short-term investor. We don't invest only for one year. Because most of our members contribute to retirement. Many people are in their 30s. The average age for our saver is about 34. And uh, that's for the active customers, the average age for our dormant customers, people who haven't used the account for one year, is about 37. So on average, we've got about 35 year, 35 year uh, members, and therefore they are going to save for another 25, 20 years, uh, and therefore you should look at a long-term rate. So the long-term rate, okay, is actually around 3.5%, okay, largely because in the past, we were running a very low inflation regime, so in, and it's in, only spiked in, up in, now. You're only, think, you're only thinking so just, that the inflation is going to be managed to just, remain to hover around 3 or 4%, right? So allow, but that is not under your control. Allow, allow me to tell you, well, it's, it's not under our control, but we have the tools to be able to invest to cover ourselves against inflation. Okay. So we have two tools, right? The first tool is obviously the fixed income investment. Fixed income investment is a tool that is determined by the benchmark rate that is issued by the central bank. The central bank has been increasing its interest rate. It's now 9.5% or 8.5%. I can't remember the exact figure, but it's between 8 and, and 9%. Okay? The reason it has been going up gradually is to tame inflation. So that means that if we invest in a bond today, it will be able to cover us for the expected inflation that is being shown by the trend. Mm -hmm. So you basically hedge yourself against inflation with the future investments that you make during this period when the rate of inflation has gone up. So that's the first tool you have. The second tool you have that will always be around is obviously investing in equities. How do they protect you against inflation? To a large extent, when a company is operating, inflation goes out, up, what will a company do? The company will increase its price of goods and services that it offers, that's why inflation goes up, and therefore the returns to the company through retained earnings will go up, and therefore the value of its share will also go up, which means that our investment will also go up, and the factor of inflation will have been covered there. The last tool we use, I said two, but there are now, there's a third one, is obviously real estate. How does real estate uh, support you in your inflation agenda? Of course, as inflation goes up, the price of land goes up, the price of building materials goes up. So when you invest in a house, you will definitely put in the price when you sell it or when you rent it out, the issue of inflation. So as a member, because you've got these different buckets of investment that are covering you on your inflation, it means that your return will cover the issue, will give you that return based on the risk that you are taking in investing, but also giving you a return that will then help you in covering your rate of inflation. So the member should not worry that because inflation has gone up, we, do not have, we don't have the mechanism to be able to reprice our investments because there is inherently a reprice mechanism which allows us then to cover for the cost of inflation to our members, which is why we use the benchmark of the 10-year okay. and therefore because we are, are long -term. beating that because we are a long-term investor. But, but let me ask, if you're a fund manager like you are and inflation um, goes up like this, does that become your headache? Of course it becomes a headache. So you uh, have a big it, headache it, now. It, it, it just means that you need to be a little bit uh, more careful in the way you, you, you invest. Uh, you need to look for opportunities that will cover you uh, with regard to that. But suddenly one of the biggest, biggest tools, uh, again, is, 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 is in things like uh, even the currency that you invest in. There are opportunities to invest in foreign currencies which hedge against the depreciation of the currency, uh, and therefore uh, that though, also though helps to you. Though as of now, even foreign currencies are having some volatility. Yeah, they're having volatility. For example, the pound is at the lowest in more than 40 years. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, that's, so that's, that's true. That's absolutely <laughs> true. But uh, we don't we don't have any exposure in pounds. Very very okay. little. Yeah, Much of our exposure is in, is in, in US dollars. dollars. Yes. But now you you have invested in Kenyan in the Kenyan market, right? That's correct. And and there has been some serious volatility in, in the Kenyan market stock, Nairobi Stock Exchange. 
So when Nairobi Stock Exchange suffers, I suppose uh, we get affected, don't we? The reason we actually uh, posted um, a loss of on, the, uh, on our, the fair values of the equity was largely to do with the Kenyan market. And uh, that was an event that happened during the period of between uh, May and June, July. Uh, it's actually recovered. So are you telling us that the Nairobi Stock Exchange has bounced back? Yes, it has, absolutely. Uh, because at the time, obviously, the whole war situation had started. The Fed and the European Investment, uh, European uh, Bank, Central Bank, uh, and a couple of other banks uh, in the developed world had begun uh, responding to their inflation pressures. You know, in the UK, you remember inflation, I think, reached even 10%. Uh, and this, their banks started raising their rates. And what that did is that the returns or the yields on their bonds went up. Um, and uh, therefore, it became safer for them to invest back in their bonds. And therefore, they unwound their positions on the local stock exchanges. Uh, and that meant that you know there was supply of these bonds on uh, sorry of these uh, s securities on our on our market, which brings the price down. I had, so, I had so, just so that's the reason why uh, the price of uh, securities went down uh, on the stock exchanges in uh, East Africa. But uh, that has largely been uh, uh, recovered, uh, and I believe that uh, if you are looking at perhaps the situation post. Uh, post June, uh, which is where we have our end of year, uh, you'll find that um, we are probably in a neutral position in terms of losses. Okay. Uh, well, I've heard the newly elected Kenyan president uh, talk very good words about the, the Ugandan fund that you had, uh, NSSF. I hope he's aware that we lost money in the Nairobi Stock Exchange. Yeah, but 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 <laughs> but, but you lose you lose money on uh, on a stock exchange, but it's a temporary movement. All right. Let me. For the viewers and everybody else listening in, stocks go up yeah. over a long period, but they might have a little bit of down in the meantime, all right? So if you are an investor in uh, a company, don't invest for a few days. Don't invest for a few months. To be, spe to be specific, where have you bought period. shares in, in which companies? In, in uh, off the top of my head, uh, the, the common ones, Safaricom, we've got a, a big shareholding there. Uh, we've got Safaricom Kenya. Safaricom Kenya. We've got investments in the banking sector. Uh, you know the usual suspects, KCB, uh, and uh, and the Equity Bank. Um, we got a couple of shares in the brewery. Um, if you look at Tanzania, we got a big exposure in the banks. We've got a big exposure in the telco there. Uh, same as Uganda. So, so you'll find that mm -hmm. uh, we've diversified in the sectors uh, and we've got a little bit of everything. Of course, we are heavily weighted uh, on, the, on, the, on the banking side or financials, as they call them. Um, but, um, but largely, uh, we do have a, a portfolio that's highly diversified um, uh, so that we can then take, you know, because in, in stocks, you've got what they call defensive stocks. You've got stocks that do well in periods of, of uncertainty, like this one. Um, for example, if you invest in a company like Uyumeme, Uyumeme's business does not get affected by demand because there will always be demand, right? People will not stop using electricity because because there is inflation. They will use electricity. But you know what the so, Parliament so of Uganda, you know how the, what the Parliament of Uganda said at one point they were saying you know, Meme should pack up and go. I hope you, that was a, I'm sure that was a big scare for you. It is still a big scare for us. But then why do you think it is the safest place yet uh, it's a it's, scare? It's a defensive stock. Uh, it's basically Because people would always need to buy yeah, abso electricity. Absolutely. Right. Just like beer. Beer is a defensive uh, stock as well. People will always drink. Uh, in happiness, they will drink. In sadness, they will drink. So they always so drink. In by percentage, in percentage terms, how much have you invested outside Uganda? And how much are you investing in Uganda? So our portfolio, as at the end of June, uh, is probably split around 60% in Uganda and about 40% uh, uh, in the rest of East Africa. And uh, is Tanzania making... Is the Tanzanian market as good as the Kenyan market? The Tanzanian market was the best performing stock exchange uh, in the financial year. In other words, it didn't lose as much value as Uganda and Kenya. Uh, Kenya lost the largest amount, uh, and uh, Uganda was in the middle uh, of the pack. 
So, when I, when I posted that I'm going to host you, I kind of hear voices from Ugandans, those who are saving. The pain is that why should they have to go to the bank, borrow money that they're going to ask, you know, exorbitant, prohibitive rates, yet somebody has 200 million, 100 million, 250 million with NSSF. Do you understand their cry? What, what, I know you're going to talk about the law, but perhaps you can also interest some members of parliament to take a, a, you know, a private member's bill and deal with that. Do you understand that people have that pain of going to the bank and they ask them for exorbitant rates, yet he has 300 million with, with you, sir? Okay. So I like to put people's lives in three buckets, mm -hmm. just like everything else. So the first bucket is your short term. All right, you need money, you borrow money for an, in a, on an overdraft, for example, which basically caters for your short term needs, which is your, you know, you want to pay for fees or you want to pay for electricity or you want to pay for water or you want to pay for things that you're using on an everyday basis. He wants a startup. All right, <laughs> now listen, mm -hmm. listen. The, the, mid, the middle term is you want to buy a house, all right? And all the things that are happening are towards doing, uh, buying a house or buying a car, because that is like a capital investment. The last thing that you'd like to do is the final part of, of your life is to retire, okay? So the honest truth is that the NSSF money should not be looked at as something that should cover your short-term problems. It's not like something that will cover your medium-term prob problems. NSSF money is specifically for that period of your life where you are towards the end of, you know, your sun, 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 sun You're about to sign I think off. Sun, sunset, yeah, <laughs> but also after you've stopped active work. Because let me tell you, I know that a lot of people still imagine that there will be a family to look after you, there will be food to look after you, there will be your children to look after you, you don't need to do so much about retirement. Let me tell you, that system has changed. You're on so your own. You're on your own, all right? I know that with myself. I've seen that with a couple of friends. Nobody is going to look after you during your retirement. So you had better have something set there. And that's what I believe is what NSF is all about. Because you can even be honest. NSF is only 5% of your salary, all right? Let's think about it. And it could be, that five percent of the salary could be all that they have. Nine, but ninety-five percent of your salary is handed to you every single month. All right. So if you were somebody who really should be somebody, you really ought to then decide how much of that ninety-five percent should I assign for my short term, how much should I assign for my medium term, because my long term is already covered by the five percent. So you, you are assuming that the money that uh, Ugandans receive as a salary is the kind of money that they can get something to eat, they can have something to save, and they can have something to That's invest. That's what the salary is And they can to have something to invest. That is what sal salary is meant to in, be. I have news for you. Yes. Even if somebody is running two or th th three jobs in Kampala, yeah. in most cases things don't add up, Richard. Yes. I, I totally agree that they might not add up, but I also say that a lot of that sometimes is self-inflicted. Because I tell people that there is this equation, this famous equation, mm -hmm. right? Mr. Uh, the President of Kenya referred to it, right? Your income is fixed. Your expenditure is variable. And out of the two, you get your savings, which is then equal to your investment. Okay, because you cannot have any investment if you don't have any savings. So get your income, reduce your expenditure, oh sorry, remove your expenditure, whatever is left is your savings, and your savings is what then you can invest. Okay, now, your salary is fixed. You can't do anything about that until you get a salary Let me tell rise. you. Oh, no, no, listen, <laughs> let me just finish this. Okay. Let me finish this analogy. I wanted to report for you something, but All you right, can continue. Yeah. Yes, your expenditure, is totally within your control. Yes, it is. Totally within your control. If it goes up, you know what will happen. They won't have any savings. If it goes down, your savings will increase and your investments will increase. So, and what determines your expenditure? It's all the things we want to do. 
all the things we try and do that actually don't add a lot of value to our life, but we still do them, all right? We see them every day, every single day. We drive a car we can't afford. We hold a wedding we can't afford. We have a couple of parties we shouldn't be doing. We hang when we shouldn't, and so on and so forth. These are things we should be doing to enable us have sufficient savings to be able to invest. I and that then that investment is what then will help you to deal with your three buckets. Then, well, if that's the analysis, then I should be seeing from NSSF a robust financial literacy campaign so that people can avoid what you're saying. You all are right. seeing them all over, yes. and you are, they are there our in a self-destructive mode, and Richard is just standing by to watch? No. Our biggest performing service, uh, value-added service. We s initially started it for people who are soon to retire. Today, our biggest added value service is financial literacy. Okay. Last year, I've got the numbers, so we touched three million Ugandans so how come through our value-adding services. We even work? have cohorts, cohorts where people go specifically to learn things like piggery, we go, we have cohorts where people go and see how you run a, a chicken fact, uh, farm. We have cohorts where people are doing coffee and so on and so forth. So we've been able to prepare people through financial literacy. Just that simple equation. The things you can do to reduce your costs, giving them tools of things you can do for yourself without necessarily di disclosing it to people. See how much you've been spending prioritizing your expenditure so that you can begin learning to, to be save. frugal absolutely but absolutely. If, if then if that is the case and the financial literacy campaign is going all over and and you seem to be uh, recording success but the same richard Birgaba sees a lot of wastage among us us so you're not having an impact well we have an impact all right um we it is a small one but it is a little revolution in fact we think if you ask, the central bank, by the way, Bank of Uganda is the custodian of financial literacy. Mm -hmm. But go and ask them, uh, ask the deputy governor one of these days, the best performing institution with regard to the financial literacy agenda. We had a conference recently where we disclosed what we'd been doing, all right? Okay. And it blew the members of the conference away, largely because of the performance of our, 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 our financial literacy. But we are taking it a step further. The law has changed to allow members to be able to save over and above the 15%. The law has changed to allow people to, make, to begin to make voluntary contributions mm -hmm. when they are working in the informal sector. How is that? Uh, we believe that is going to be the biggest, biggest game changer for us. Because what that's going to do is it's going to allow us to begin to provide what we call financial advisory. Financial advisory is going to become a big deal for us because at the end of the day, how do we help individuals make those financial decisions? Because people don't know. People, for example, don't know why you should invest a portion of your portfolio in fixed income. Mm -hmm. Individuals don't know why they should invest their portfolio in, in, in equities. Individuals don't know why they should put some money in real estate, right? Typically, if you run down, I'm sure if I ask you the question, how much money do you have in, 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 in fixed income? You'll probably tell me you don't have any. I'll ask you, if, do you have any shares that you bought on the stock exchange? You'll probably tell me no. Do you know where all your money is? Probably in real estate. But guess what? That means you're putting all your eggs in one basket. Yeah, real right? estate and real estate, that's true. Uh, in, in concrete and <laughs> block, brick and mortar. Exactly. And yet uh, it's not adding. Now, you know, now I, keep, <coughs> I, keep, I keep telling so, people, so, so as now, soon as you get money from the I'm bank. put in real estate. And then you go and you go down to downtown market in uh, the hardware shops and you buy a cement and you buy a mitayimbwa. Suddenly all that money that was liquid has now become solid, right? And I can tell you, there are a lot of things you need to do with the liquid money. So, 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 now, so, now, so, now, so now, one of your uh, ambitious plan is actually to invest in, in real estate. Making no, money actually, um, th you, 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 that's yeah, not true. I've seen the Timangalo buildings. Yes. They're, they're very beautiful and fancy. Yeah. And the people who were responding when I asked the question, they're like, okay, these houses are there. Mm. How can we own them? 
How okay. can they own them? All right. So first of all, let me break the myth. Okay. All right. You recall before you interrupted me that I'd said that we've got 78, about 78 percent in real estate. Sorry, in uh, fixed income. Yes. We've got about 15 percent in equities. I disclose those. So if you do the maths quickly, the last part is, uh, is about seven percent. Seven percent. Yeah. Right. Seven percent right. is in real in uh, real estate. That is a very small percentage. Right? It is a very it's, small. It's about but you've invested about seventy million dollars. It, it, it is one point. Yeah, that's about one point two trillion shillings, only, of our portfolio of one point uh, of seventeen point two five no, trillion the, shillings. Uh, Richard, the worry is, or even what annoys people is that. I don't yes. think it should annoy them. Well, this is how I'm going to put it: mm -hmm. is that they, they will look at those fancy buildings, mm -hmm. but they can only look, the servers, in whose money. You, go, you know, here's the kitty you touched to build those houses. Mm. They can only look at them. They have no capacity to buy them. Neither can they even, if they are to for rent, to stay in them. All right. And 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 so and, and that bothers them. Yes, that's that's probably a very good a, a very good observation. But the the honest truth is that we have an inherent problem. It's not only for us as NSSF. It's a problem for I think all people who are involved in construction. And this inherent problem is that, especially if you do what we are doing, all our projects are not in uh, downtown Kololo. All our projects are not in downtown Mbuya. All right, we had something in Mbuya, but that was very small. All our projects are in places where there is no infrastructure. So there are no roads, there are no water storm management systems, there are no sewage systems, there are no electricity poles, there are no nothing. We build everything from scratch. What does that mean? It means that at least 30% of the cost of the project is for infrastructure. That's the first inherent problem. The second inherent problem is land. As soon as NSSF wants to buy land, the price of land goes up. Right? We've tried to disguise our identity in order to buy land, but soon enough, it does get discovered, and as soon as people know it is NSF buying, there's a premium on the land. In any case, if you look at Luboa, that land is prime. I think 600 million shillings, 700 million shillings for an acre is about the going rate. So if you were to put houses on there, surely you've got to put in the price of land, you've got to put in the price of the infrastructure, and then you've got to put in the price of, in, of, um, of, uh, of construction. Now, given that construction in that area, it is a prime area, you will not put a low-cost house in on a 600 million, on a uh, 600 million uh, land. acre. Yeah, exactly. So th that is the dilemma for us, and we totally understand, which is why we decided that in Imbuya, sorry, in, uh, in Temangalo, and in, uh, in, in Simbe eventually, we will build affordable housing and I don't want to call them low cost housing they are affordable because people affordable is what affordable is anything between 90 million that's what we have said and 250 260 maybe going up to 300 300 million so shares. do they have to pay that money up front so what we've decided to do again in order to promote the demand side is especially for those who are our members because then we have their data we will be able to give them an offer of rent to own which basically means mortgage they can yeah well it's it's basically sub sub side side stepping i think that's the word okay. side stepping are an, a mortgage because there are a lot of operational costs or costs that banks are put on that because we know your behavior we know how much salary you get we know how much you've been saving we know a little bit about you and your finances because we can see it on your account we therefore will allow you to be able to pay a deposit maybe 20 percent of the house and then stay in it until you finish uh, paying through what we call a rent to own model all right and i believe that is a game changer in the market richard biarugawa md nssf hold on to your points because you're going to take a break and uh, on the spot we'll be right back Welcome back. You're watching On The Spot. My name is Patrick Amara. My guest tonight is Mr. Richard Biarugaba, Managing Director, NSSF. 
You know, we are talking about real estate, and uh, you have invested in uh, in Temangalo, and, and you are investing in Simbe. Uh, and maybe there will be an option where people can pay some percentage and then they stay in the houses and then uh, start paying some rent and eventually they own those houses. I think that, is, that would be a good thing. That is in few, in, like in when? <laughs> well, like, like now. I mean, if, if anybody has um, a good balance on their account... Um, a good balance is what? Uh, well, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> a good balance uh, commiserate with the, the rent to own... Uh, approach obviously we it would be you know a rent to own is basically you would have to amortize the the balance that no, the person has can not can you put that in a better term well basically <laughs> <laughs> okay all right so supposing you had to pay um, a, 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 a loan of a hundred million over mm -hmm. ten years mm -hmm. all right okay so that is a hundred million divided through by ten which is ten million so ten million divided through by twelve whatever that is, okay. is and that then the include there the amount of, of mm. interest, okay. uh, which you know, the probably is much less than what you'd You see, the problem the is of, so that's of, the real, amortization. of real estate. That's the amortization. Yeah. It, it, a gentleman will go and build a home somewhere in a, a, a good neighborhood in Kampala, put in about 400 million, but that house, you may find maybe they're going to give a million as, r as rent. A million shillings, yeah. A million shillings of rent. Mm. Do you know that it can take you about 40 years to recover that? Yes, if, you've, uh, so if, that's, if that's your <laughs> own investment. You know, you, know, you know, because at the end of the day, mm. 400 million, you can, you can only recover that money in 40 years. Is that a business? But that's what most Ugandans do. Most Ugandans yeah, but no, I'm not saying what are, most. Are, I'm asking are, about the, are, this are acute. Drunk with the uh, <laughs> I'm asking about this acute drunk. businessman yes. who understands the dynamics. Yes. That you 400 million shillings invested in a house, somebody gives you a million a month, you can only get that money maybe in 40 years. Yeah. You know what? Does it make sense? You know what would really be good uh, with our country mm -hmm. is if we had a lot more developers, uh, so that economies of scale come up, the cost of construction comes down. Uh, we have a way of improving the, 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 the infrastructure. Uh, that way, then you create a viable market. In, in fact, I am, I'm busy showing, the, we, uh, they are showing there on, on the screen yes. about uh, the things that you need. These are, these are, these are, these are uh, that, that, artistic impression, right? That, th that's our project in, uh, in, in Lavoie, which, which, which as you can see is... Uh, Pretty, pretty, pretty looking good. Uh, I can see some amenities uh, there. Yes, yes. Uh, okay. And it will have uh, basketball courts and yes, stuff like yeah. that. It will, it will definitely. Uh, actually, the we it is a live, work, and play. Okay. So you're supposed to live there. You're supposed to work there. Play and there. And you can also play there. Or even pray there. <laughs> and pray. Yes, <laughs> yes, of course. So, yeah. but you know, because I had initially, you said you can also have houses for rent, and I'm wondering if you Richard builds a house, and I'm supposed to rent it. I mean, no, you no, bought, no, no, no. bought land for no, 600 no, no, no. million. All the houses are for sale. Okay. But the sale model is different. Okay. So there will be people who are allowed to make installments over a certain period, physical installments, okay. you know, like, you know, pay 20% and then pay another 30% after a couple of months and then pay another 30% and maybe finish the thing in a year or two years. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be an acceptable mode. There are people who have money and would want to pay the entire deposit, uh, the entire amount, and take it. Or there are people who might want to go to a bank, pay a deposit, and then go to the bank with a title, and then the bank gives them a mortgage, and then they pay the bank, and we are out of the transaction. But there are people who we believe might want to remove the bank from the transaction and basically come to live in the property pay a deposit, and then live in the property, so pay a rent, okay, but that rent would be equivalent to paying an installment of a mortgage. On your own house. That's on your own, own house. So okay. basically rent your own house, because it's not yet your own house until you've paid. Until you finish the money. Yes, absolutely. But if you get the money in a lump sum along the way, you yes. can actually finish it. Of course it you can then finish it. So is, has that kick-started? Yes, it has kick-started. Okay. Uh, yeah. Ugandans are, are watching. But the thing is, how much does an average saver has with the NSSF? <sighs> All right. So that's uh, not a very good question to ask, but I will, uh, I, will, I will give it to you. <laughs> an average saver on uh, today 
uh, when they are retiring, they will get 20 million shillings. So in, so in other words, they are, that, these houses you're talking about are way above their pay grade. For the average saver, yes. And, but, the, and, and the but, 20 million, yeah, the but 20 million for the average saver, mm. those are the majority. That's correct. That's correct. But, but Richard, do you, but, do you realize? But, but if you break down yeah. the, if you break down our savings pattern, there are a number of people. In fact, I hasten to add, there is about maybe 40,000, maybe 50,000 people who've got uh, balances of over say 500 million shillings over to 20,000 no i said 40,000 40,000 who 40, could be maybe 50,000 who have over 400 million yeah absolutely okay so and you have and, so we've you have, and we've so you have a very big group also so, so we've only we've only built 300 houses 306 houses in uh, in uh, in loboa and we've built uh, 500 and oh, we're going to build 550 houses in uh, in temangalo I, I, saw, the, I, saw the first phase. I saw a video of the houses that are complete, I think, yes, in Temangal. absolutely. So you have complete, its houses are complete? Yes, five, 550. The entire project will be finished uh, in the year after next. But uh, yes, we are 25% in, in Temangal. So yes, those houses will have our members who can afford them. Because you have about 40,000 who could, if they wished, they could afford them. Absolutely. But, in, but, but remember, I'm told you have, you have almost, how many savers do you have? Three million? We've got uh, two, two million, 2.1 million, who are uh, on our database. Uh, so, so these are the houses, I suppose, that are in Temangalo, right? Yes, that's Temangalo. Uh, okay. Looking, looking, looking pretty good, I think. You know, one of the things that is good about this, I, I suppose, is because you give them a neighborhood that is safe, yes. that is secure, because yes. at the end of the day... And the infrastructure. Most importantly is infrastructure. Because these houses will have roads, will have light, street lighting, they will have drainage systems, they will have uh, sewage uh, systems, they will also have uh, internet, uh, Wi-Fi, Every single house will have that, and and, 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 sis, and, and CCTV, and, and, security, and CCTV, security, and CCTV. Because that's why some people, in some cases, so they will be gated communities. <coughs> they will be owned <coughs> by the people who buy them. <coughs> so one of the things we are encouraging, <coughs> and we've started teaching mm -hmm. uh, our 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 members, is uh, what we call uh, get, gated communities, but also. Uh, what we call homeowners associations. Richard, you are, you are, bringing, a gated, you are bringing a gated community in Uganda. Yes, we, we, absolutely. We, we are people who mix a lot, and this is a very, foreign, con a is very uh, foreign concept for people who, yeah. are, 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 f who are so close to each other. Yeah, but gated community also means that people then become closer to each other. They will own the whole public areas mm -hmm. jointly. They will be able to do their own, decide who does their own rubbish. Uh, they will decide who, who does their own mowing of the grass, that sort of thing, who manages their landscape together. Uh, they will manage uh, the health clubs. There will be health clubs in there. There will be swimming pools. There will be gyms in there that are jointly owned by all the members. Um, and uh, we believe that that is is a new way of living, but it's you know it's not dis it's not discovering. It's it's av it's available in Kenya. It's available in South Africa. It's available in most most countries that that, <coughs> that 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 want to take housing to a new level. And that's and that's what we want to do. That's what we want to contribute How to this nation. How has the midterm access affected your bank balance? Well, we paid out uh, almost uh, 500 billion shillings uh, for midterm <coughs> access mm -hmm. so far, actually. Uh, to 20, about 20... 500, that's half a trillion. Yes. To 20, I would say now almost 24,000 uh, people. How many people did you envisage to access uh, the money? Uh, at the beginning, we envisaged uh, 40, 44,000. 44,000 or 42,000. And how much did so you expect to so pay So about 50% have come out. We expected to pay 900, and we still believe that we'll, it will be around that number, 900 billion, a uh, trillion shillings. Do you have an idea where this money has been invested? I know it is their personal money, but sometimes you could follow and get the trends. You how it has affected the economy and what individuals have used it You won't believe it. Mm -hmm. One of the segments we wanted to play uh, on the annual members meeting, we were very excited, is uh, we wanted to play a segment of friends with benefits, mm -hmm. all right? But friends with benefits of those individuals who had taken 
uh, their midterm access. Nobody volunteered to come on the show to basically tell us Just what they had done with their money. But we know that a majority, of course, there were stressful times. A lot of people paid immediate bills, right? So school fees, we know, was a big issue. There are some people who had lost jobs. They wanted to pay things like rent and be up to date while they look for something. Uh, we also know that there were some people, especially those who had higher balances, who took out their money and invested in the Uganda Securities. Uh, oh, Uganda, oh really? Yeah, absolutely, yeah, because Uganda Securities are now paying 18 and a half uh, in coupon rates, so that's on a 20-year bond. So do you have our money there? Oh yeah, we do have okay. uh, uh, some of your money there. You're getting 18 percent and you're giving us nine? Yeah, but that is uh, a small portion of the <laughs> okay. uh, Mr. Kamara. Right? <laughs> don't 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 be a bad boy. <laughs> um, <coughs> uh, and then some people, would you believe it? Mm. Uh, I know one or two people who went on a holiday, which is their money. It's fine. It's, it's their money. Yeah. Yes, they can absolutely. unwind. Absolutely, they can <laughs> unwind. Uh, you know, it has been a stressful period. You know, go to Dubai and have a little bit of fun and come back and uh, make more money. Go and enjoy the heat and the sun, eh? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but, so the financial literacy um, education or sensitization programs are continuous. Are, are, they, are they also in They are actually online. Are they also they are, they're online. We also get... Does it, doesn't we, that leave out some people? Yes, the, it does leave out people, but uh, the people, the, we have even classes, physical classes. Of course, a lot of the COVID, during the COVID period, because of, of the circumstances, we'd reduce on the physical classes. Mm -hmm. But uh, certainly, uh, I, I do encourage everybody, go on our website, uh, you will be able to join one of the classes. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, and I think it's a great value. Uh, some of the things may appear very obvious, you know, like, like this equation I've talked about, you know, where your income is fixed and your your expenses are variable and therefore your your investment income or your your savings which turn into investment uh, you know it, it appears like a simple concept but there are a lot of things you can learn on how <coughs> to manage your expenses okay. to be able to improve on your savings I have heard some people criticize the composition of the board who are also a member um, I wonder, by the way... That's above my pay grade. Yeah, I, I, but no, but you are, you are the MD and you sit on that, that, that board. Because... I, I don't even know why, why, people, you, people, why you're bringing it up. Why, why would it die? <laughs> <laughs> because, look, um, people who represent us, the employees... Yeah. They're members of the, of the union. Of the union. But with all respect, um, some people are saying, you can have them there, but you can also have corporate Ugandans in employment who can be there. But they are not on, they are not on that board. I, I think the, that opportunity you have was the, missed. You have, you have the plantation workers, you have all these, yes, the employees like us, but you also need another group uh, on, I the, think, on that board. I think that that matter needs to have been uh, brought to parliament because, as you know, this but, was, but, look, Richard, was a matter Richard, do you that agree that that board needs also to have employees of another category as well, as much as we have the other? Because I think there are four. The union, yes. The, the union for the yeah, maybe for. two could be from the union and then two from the corporate bodies. I think you you know where to send that question. But to. Richard, am I, do I have an ally in you on this? Um, I, I I you know I don't think that is uh, it's not my pay grade. No, I, 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 I honestly do, 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 do I have a point? It, it, it's is, a very you, you see a point. It's in what a I'm very saying. political question. How is and, that and I don't I don't how I, is that even I don't, political? I don't play politics. How is that? Is I don't play political. I'm a technician, and how, I just how do my is work. that political, sir? That's the board I have, and uh, we 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 do well. We, I'm not uh, I'm not underestimating their capacity. Yes, I'm only saying a little more inclusion. Yeah, but it's not my decision to make. The minister appoints them, but the minister only appoints them because it's been put in the law. Even the minister actually doesn't have an option. Uh, she gets nominations from the unions. She gets nominations from the employers, federation. Are you scared of and smart she people? And she gets, uh, she gets um, uh, the two permanent secretaries uh, from the Minister of Finance and the Minister of, of uh, Gender. And they compose the board, including an independent chairman and uh, a managing director, who is uh, an ex-official. You know, by the way, my, 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 my thinking is not that they are not good, doing a good job. My thinking is that they needed some other group also needed inclusion, that's all. Whereas they should be there because there are many, they represent the union, but I'm thinking, and I'm sure there are other Ugandans who think they needed to be reinforced 
by another group. But yeah, Richard, well, we're going well, <laughs> that's water by uh, under the bridge, mm -hmm. and uh, you can only resolve it through uh, uh, the, the the political process, which is through the Parliament. Um, and uh, it's up to you. Okay. If you feel strongly about it. Uh, well, <laughs> um, I've, I've heard it from other people. We're going to take a break. And um, when we come back, I'm going to be reading your comments or your questions so that Richard can respond to them. We have a WhatsApp number on the screen. Please send them. And uh, Richard will respond. Whatever you think is, is the headache or the challenge that you see. But also, if you want to commend them, yes, you can also commend the job that they have done. We'll be right back. still watching on the spot my name is patrick kamara my guest tonight is mr richard biarugaba managing director of the national social security fund and we're discussing about your fund or our fund i'm standing here at the, at the magic wall because we're going to be getting your questions and your comments so that i read these comments or questions to mr biarugaba so that he can be able to respond to them so i'm okwari richard from seta I lost my job in 2020. Up to now, I have failed to get another job. I'm 40 years. How can I get my savings? Because life is very hard for me, sir. Richard? Unfortunately, Richard, namesake, um, the law has only three ways of getting your money before, um, you know, for age reasons. So the first way is if you get to the age of 45, and you have contributed for 10 years, i.e. you have 120 contributions on your account, that's what the law says, mm -hmm. then you can withdraw at least 20% of your money. The other way is you get to the age of 50 mm -hmm. and you are unemployed as such as you are at the moment, and that way you will be allowed to withdraw 100% of your savings th through what they call a withdrawal benefit. Of okay. course, mm -hmm. the ideal would be to get to the age of 55, and whether you are in employment or not, then you can get your money. So, Richard, really the only answer is you've got five years to go before you get to the age of uh, 45, and I hope you made 120 contributions on your account, and therefore you will qualify to get at least 20% of your uh, b benefits. All right, um, let me get another person here. He says, good evening, Patrick and Richard. I'm Justin o Ojangole, a voluntary contributor. I got my interest rate yesterday, and I'm happy. I have two questions. One, who is in charge of security in these NSSF housing states after all the houses have been sold off to individuals? Two, how can any person interest to buy the unit, get the pricing details, and do you organize tours the site for interested buyers? Thank you, Patrick, for hosting the MD. Thank you so much. Uh, that's uh, a very good comment, and I'm happy that you are happy. I know you are. <laughs> <laughs> so the first question was to do with the security. Mm -hmm. uh, once we have sold all the houses, mm -hmm. the property or the gated community now belongs to all the house owners, uh, and NSSF will withdraw our security, and the House Owners Association, which is a company that will have been created by the individuals who own the houses, will then begin to run with the security, will begin to run with uh, all the other amenities that need to be done that are communally done. As I said, things like rubbish collection, things like running the uh, clubhouse, all that will be managed by uh, the Home Owners Association. Your second question is around the houses themselves. Um, where can they be bought? Um, we, we, we have um, some contacts. Uh, if you go to our website, we've got some contacts. Um, but uh, please get in touch with us. Send us an email. Uh, we'll be able to get in touch uh, with you. Uh, you know, go on to our, we've got a lot of channels uh, in which you can uh, uh, call the IVR line or you can even call our call center. Uh, and all those channels, you will be able to get in touch with us. The houses can be visited, uh, especially those ones in Luboa. Uh, we actually uh, take their visitors even during the weekend because we know a lot of people get time in the weekend. So come and visit. Uh, the prices will be given to you, uh, and then you can choose what you really want. But and the houses in Luboa, those ones are quite uh, on, on the higher pay grade, right? They are quite on the higher pay grade, but um, you know, there's nothing wrong with coming and looking okay. and then aspiring to own them. All right. Um, 
you, you also talked about another, let me just pick another question. Um, thank you for the show. It is helping me learn much that I didn't know, for example, about NSSF. Uh, somebody is saying us that uh, they have learned more tonight. Uh, Mr. Piyadugaba, don't you think your so-called target group already can afford already decent housing on their own, i.e. those with the heavy account NSSF balances of up 300 million or beyond? Are these houses really affordable? But your average savers, whose savings at retirement are about 50 or less. In fact, you said an average saver has 20 million at the end of the retirement, which I think is way below what you would need to pay for Luboa or even Temangalo. Yes, I, I mean, I can feel the pain in that question. Mm -hmm. uh, I can totally understand that there will be a market segment that uh, we cannot uh, provide housing for. But uh, I, I can assure you that uh, with the, especially the Nsimbe project, which is a much larger area and slightly out of Kampala, we will try and bring that cost, unit cost down and perhaps, hopefully, achieve that 50 million target that you've mentioned in there. But, but you're talking about building the infrastructure. You're starting from the scratch. The land is expensive. They are putting a prime on it because NSS is buying. How do you bring down the cost? Well, I'm hoping that uh, we can find a bit of technology. Uh, we've been exploring some of those things uh, where we can build a lot of houses at uh, a slightly reduced cost. Um, but some of the things that people are looking for uh, might be compromised. For example, uh, are people prepared to use a, a prefab uh, as a wall, right? I, I, I'm, I'm not too sure because if we were to use prefab, certainly the cost of construction would come down. And there is definitely a possibility that because we are doing that in masses, we can bring the unit cost down. But again, this is something we still have to try. We need to test that with the market and find where there is demand. Just for information, as NSSF, we actually do undertake uh, serious feasibility studies. We undertake uh, business analysis. We do uh, cost benefits. Uh, we interview uh, potential customers. And uh, we do not build for a market that doesn't exist. Okay. So all of the houses that we build, we know that there is a market, and we know that we'll be able to sell them. All right, let me try to pick some more uh, comments and questions coming in tonight for those who have been watching this uh, uh, broadcast. I have uh, somebody saying, I just want to thank Mr. Yarugaba Richard for the work well done. I appreciate you. And uh, some, somebody says, I'm Johnny Tumwebaze from Bushenyi. I appreciate the work Mr. Yarugaba Richard does. Well done, sir. What a sweet music to your ears for, for such a message. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> Hello, thanks for the program. Please ask Richard, when the NSSF mortgage guidelines will be ready to allow members to use 50% of their savings to clear existing mortgages as passed by Uganda Regulatory um, Ubra? All right, so there is a little... Uh, challenge uh, mm -hmm. in that particular uh, thing um, because uh, although UBRA issued those uh, regulations, the NSSF Act was not amended uh, to take uh, recognition of that. So what is the problem? The NSSF Act says that savings of anybody, whatever name they are called, mm -hmm. will not be mortgaged. They will not be, uh, you can't put a lien on them. Uh, you cannot use them as collateral. Uh, in fact, the reason they, there is that very strict uh, clause within the NSSF Act is to protect our members. Because you can imagine if you were working for me, and I know that I've been contributing money uh, into NSSF for you, I'm your employer, and then one day you walk away with um, 10 million shillings, uh, being company property, um, and um, I take you to court or I, I want to recover the money from you, uh, if the law wasn't that strict, I could go to NSF and I say, you know, I've been the employer, I've been making these contributions, this person has defrauded us, can I recover the 10 million from his savings? So they didn't want that to happen, and that's why they put in that very strict law. So unfortunately, it means that we can't uh, use your savings as collateral uh, as a, uh, to a loan or even for a mortgage uh, in accordance with the regulations that the Uganda registration, sorry, Uganda uh, Retirement uh, Bureau, ha sorry, the UBRA has uh, put in place. So that's why uh, it is so important that um, we try and resolve that before we come back uh, to implement uh, the regulations of uh, UBRA. All right, um, let me pick some more. 
Good evening. Thank you for the candid show. My question is, how does the interest rate 9.65% benefit or motivate voluntary employers to trust the fund and continue to register their employees on the fund? That's a brilliant question, actually. Uh, what the member is saying is that um, voluntary contributors uh, are not forced to register with us. They do so willingly. And one of the things they want is definitely return. And because we didn't have a great year, the return is not great, will they be motivated going forward to actually invest with us? So I have two answers for you. One is that the return this year, I believe, is largely being affected by the huge payouts we had to make uh, for the uh, midterm access. And that was a one-off event going forward. This becomes a regular payment. We do not have to change our investment strategy. We now know how much, how many people are, are getting to the age of 45. We therefore can plan our finances better. And therefore, the returns, uh, which you've enjoyed as a as members over the, peri the previous period will definitely return in the coming periods. So All that's, right. the, that's the first thing. The second thing is okay. that we will provide products. We'll provide products uh, that are over and above what you currently enjoy. Currently, voluntary members are receiving the product of retirement, which is a long-term product. We will be introducing uh, some medium-term products. Uh, we will be introducing things like unit trusts. We will be introducing uh, a smart plan account, which basically means that you can begin to save for, say, three years, two years, one year, 10 years, five years, or whatever period you want for whatever reason you want to save, education, health, insurance, and all those things. So we believe that by giving you a lot more products than we currently are giving you and giving you a good return, and providing you the safety, the fact that the fund is guaranteed by government, you should then be able to come back and save with us. All right. Um, probably let me take two more questions. Good evening. I'm Ivan, watching live from Charlie Wajala. My question is, has NSSF thought of investing in crypto? That is a question that keeps coming around. Mm -hmm. So um, we don't actually, we've not even thought about investing in crypto. Uh, because uh, I am of the view that crypto is much better uh, a system for uh, keeping data rather than keeping value. Because how do you keep value? You keep value uh, through uh, creating a market, and a market uh, which means that if a, you know, the value of, of an asset uh, has cash flows, um, then, th then it will be able to generate a return uh, for you. Unfortunately for crypto, I don't foresee any cash flows. I am not aware of, 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 of a market uh, where crypto is. And to be quite frank, it's such a new, uh, it's a, such a new product on the market. And I, I think that um, savers, uh, pensioners uh, who save with NSSF would not forgive us uh, if we were to invest in crypto and suddenly the value of crypto goes nose, down, nose diving as it's done in the recent past, uh, I don't think they would forgive us. So at the moment, no. You don't uh, want I don't to take believe, that risk. I don't believe we'll do that uh, in a, a little while. OK, um, let me just maybe pick more. Well done, NSSF. It was a sigh of relief for many of us that even in these tough times, you managed to attain a decent return. But going forward, what are the greatest risks to the pension sector? And how are you hedging against them? Thank you for the show, Joseph Burite in Shamaire. The biggest risk to the pension sector has always been, will continue to be, the shortage of uh, investment products to be able to invest in. I mentioned to you that our strategic asset allocation, for example, towards equities is 15%. However, our optimal target is about 25%. So you can imagine that we are heavy on fixed income, uh, you criticize it. You remember uh, Mr. Kamara a little bit earlier on in our show. Uh, and the reason you criticize it and you properly did is because although it is a surface, it also gives you the lowest returns. So we would like to have a bigger exposure in equities, but we do not have enough investment uh, vehicles within the equity space. So there are not very many new companies listing. Even in the private equity space, there is very little Can't you go beyond the region of East Africa? 
the law doesn't allow us. Oh, okay. So um, that's the constraint. So I think that would be the first thing. Of course, the second thing is that because of inflation, uh, the um, the returns that uh, our members expect expect us to hedge against inflation. So the risk is that if the inflation continues uh, in the medium term, then we need to find some uh, investment instruments which will be able to hedge us against that inflation. Again, because of the fact that there are not sufficient uh, other investments out, uh, apart from uh, fixed income or in bonds, um, then that becomes a huge risk for us. And we have the last, the last risk uh, I would like to talk about is obviously around um, uh, governance. Mm. Um, that is always, always a, a, a big risk. I know that governance at the fund has been stable for the last uh, 10, uh, 10 years. Um, it also coincides with the time I've been there. But you know, the thing is that if governance is not done properly, then there is a, a, a big possibility that th the fund would, would, you know, could go back to the bad old days. So I think governance is a big, a big risk. Uh, governance is around uh, the ministry. Governance is around the board. The governance is around the management. Governance is around uh, the, the, the staff uh, of, 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 the, of, of that. So you need, you need to make sure that that continues to be, to be good. So I would say those would be the three main risks that I'm looking at. And uh, Sarah says, ask Mr. Biarugaba how big the houses of 90 million are. They're big enough uh, to accommodate your family, I'm sure. Uh, all right, I hope we're so you know the family. So two, two bedrooms, I believe. All right, okay. thank you, NSS, for supporting financial literacy. I believe it will change lives. That is uh, also some from someone. On the spot, in addition to voluntary contributions, could the NSSF consider using real estate investment trusts to attract public investment into the fund? Brian in Kigo. Yeah, that's a very good question. That's a very good observation. Uh, investment uh, trusts... Uh, real estate, okay, they're called, the official name is called REITs. Um, these are, for those who would like to know a little bit more, uh, those investment vehicles are like owning a share in a, in, in, in a real estate project. Uh, the challenge we have is that although the uh, real estate uh, investment uh, trusts have been approved in Uganda by the Capital Markets Authority, no entity, no company has brought a writ onto the market. Uh, in Kenya, they brought writs onto the market. I think there were two, uh, but they were not very popular. Uh, they were not performing very well. Uh, I believe largely because the underlying assets were not that great. They didn't have great cash flows, and therefore the valuations for them were not that great and people have not taken them up. So right. yes, it is a, a, an opportunity, but it's an opportunity that hasn't been grabbed by this market. All right, I want to thank all those who have been viewing, who have been a part of this program. We will thank you for the privilege of your company. Uh, we are coming to the end of our show tonight. Um, Mr. Virugaba, what's going to be your concluding remark? Well, By the way, before you conclude, <laughs> one more. How big is the fund? The fund today is about 17.25 um, trillion shillings. That is almost, um, almost $5 billion dollars. Slightly less than five. That's million bigger million. than any bank in town. It's uh, it's about ten percent of Uganda's uh, GDP. That's, that's, how that's all the banks com com combined here. Uh, that's a few banks combined. You're, you're that's, that's a, few that's banks a lot combined. of money, Richard. You're, you're managing. That's that's colossal correct. sums of money. That's that's correct. All right. Um, and uh, by the way, you quoted uh, that maybe some of these things can uh, can be explained better by the deputy. Governor Bank of Uganda. On, on financial literacy. Yeah, yeah. On financial so, literacy. So since you're very good at some of these things, if somebody of said, well, manage the central bank, what would your governor say? Patrick, do you expect me to answer that question? <laughs> okay, uh, what's going to be your parting shot? <laughs> well, thank you so much for hosting me. Uh, it was uh, a pleasure, uh, as usual, uh, coming here. I think this is my third time. I always enjoy these shows. Thank you. I hope the public enjoyed uh, the show as well. Uh, we tried to make it a little bit different. We talked a little bit about strategy. We talked a little bit about uh, the challenges. We talked about the things we could do a little bit better. And I hope that um, our members uh, have the confidence to continue investing in the fund, uh, making sure that their pension uh, is, is safe uh, so that when they retire, they have a handsome amount. And please, please, please um, join our financial literacy classes 
uh, if you require a little bit of help, especially uh, on the assets that you should be investing in. You should have a little portfolio of your own apart from NSSF, and it should cover all the three asset classes I talked about because they will help you in managing uh, your wealth as you grow older so that by the time you retire, you have a lot more other assets uh, in all those asset classes, but also have NSSF uh, to cover you in your old age. Thank you so much, Mr. Richard Biarugaba, Managing Director, NSSF. Thank you for your time, but most of all, thank you for your insight. And of course, you've gotten a lot of commendation from all those who have been uh, following us on this program. I want to thank them for having sent all those questions and their comments because you enriched this discussion. I know Richard has told us, and this is a fact, that we are only contributing 5%. 95% of our salary, we get it. So if we can find a way of getting something to eat, something to invest, and maybe something to save. Perhaps maybe we can keep something when we are weak and wobbly. Good night and God bless Uganda.